So welcome to everybody that's joined us today uh, to this uh, CL webinar with uh, Fronius and BYD Battery Box. Um, my name is Robert Hendry. I'm from the Sales Director from CCL Components. Um, today we're joined by with uh, Ewan Taylor and David Porter from Fronius, the Solar Division in the UK, and also present today is Alvaro Garcia from BYD Battery Box. Um, the agenda today is is going to be around the new Fronius uh, Gen 24 inverters and BYD's new HVSDPM batteries. For those of uh, you who are not familiar with CCL, it will be a quick two or three minute overview and then Ewan will take us through the new 24 inverters. After that, Alvaro will present the new UID batteries and the David will run through the sort of installation and integration. At the end, there'll be uh, a, uh, hopefully uh, time for Q&A. During the presentations, there is a questions box at the side of the, the webinar. So please, if you have any questions throughout, then just add your questions in there and hopefully we can pick them up and, and answer them at the end. A little bit about CCL, for those of you who don't know us, we've been operating in the UK for over 23 years. Head office in East Kilbride near Glasgow, where most of our staff are and warehousing is located. We've over 30,000 square feet of warehousing here, and also in the last couple of years, we've opened our office and warehousing in the Netherlands to serve our European customers. 2021, um, you know, we've now got a fairly global presence supplying products to most countries across the world. We've got a dedicated sales team um, in, based in East Kilbride in Glasgow who will help with any inquiries you have. And We've also got a we've launched this year. We've launched a new website uh, with the online portal. So if you haven't already checked that out, then please do so. Once you're signed up um, to, to that, then obviously you get your own sort of free prices online. You can place your orders, check stock, prepare quotes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, online. Um, and so if you've not already done that, then, then please get get on nccocomponents.com and check it out. A little bit about CCL. We've been on, as I say, we've been on the go for a, a, a long time. We've got, uh, we work with the leading brands in the industry from inverters, modules, and structures, EV charging solutions, and obviously battery solutions, which we're hopefully going to talk about more today. Uh, and we've also got a dedicated off grid team as well who look after off grid inquiries. We've dealt with many, many projects over the years social housing projects, domestic rollouts, commercial solar, rooftops mounts and, and, and everything in between. So we're a very well established um, organisation and uh, very proud to be working with some of the, the major manufacturers uh, in the world. Today, um, our partners that we're working with, uh, we've been working with Fronius uh, for over 10 years and we have also been distributing uh, BYD battery box products for over 70, seven or eight years as well. So we've got a long and trusted relationship with both partners and we're delighted that, our, that their new products work seamlessly together to bring a new energy storage package to the market. Um, so without going into any more details about CCL, I'm sure you, most of you know who we are. So I'm going to pass you over to uh, our first presenter today, which is Ewan Taylor from Fronius. Uh, um, if I can get over, over to you, Ewan. Thanks, Robert. Uh, I'll just steal the presentation off you. That's OK. Yeah. Hopefully you can see that. Perfect. Thanks, Robert. Um, as Robert said, my name is Ewan Taylor. I'm technical sales advisor for Fronius. I'm based not too far from CCL, actually, just in South Lanarkshire. So we'll be helping all of you in the north of England and throughout Scotland if you ever have any questions regarding Fronius. So without further ado, I will just crack on and introduce the new Fronius Gen 24 inverter. Hopefully we can see this. So the Fronius vision is 24 hours of sun, and that is what we are working for day by day. And we are trying to move one step closer to 24 hours of sun with each one of our products. We also want to make 24 hours of sun possible for all our customers. But what do our customers actually want? Let's have a closer look. So we believe that our customers want a green energy system, which is reliable, 
We believe that customers want to achieve maximum self-consumption through uh, integration of electrified heating and cooling, as well as e-mobility. We believe that they want energy security and energy independence uh, with easy battery backup and overall just a smart system with intelligent interfaces. So we can do all of this with our new product, the Gen24 Plus. This inverter is ideal for those who want to be early adopters of the energy sector uh, coupling uh, area, or for those who are still undecided. The inverter allows for full integration now or slow development, adding products as they see fit, uh, as they fit the user's lifestyle. So the uniquely versatile inverter comes again in the classic Primo and Simo distinctions. If you've used Fronius before, hopefully you'll have seen these. The Primo being a single phase inverter, uh, with power classes from three to six kilowatts, and the Simo being three phase inverter with power classes from six to 10 kilowatts. Both of the Gen24 Plus Primo and Simo inverters come with uh, dual MPP trackers, and both come with an integrated DC battery connection. So if you're adding a battery, you're not losing any of those trackers. The Simo, the three phase inverter is available now, and the Primo, the single phase inverter will be available uh, in May of this year. So back to what the customers want. We believe the customer needs and wants a reliable core system. So along with the uh, Gen24 inverters and a smart meter, we can provide a strong starting point for a core system that helps the customer with their individual energy transition. A si we believe we can give them a system which helps them to reduce their energy cost, a system which uh, has multiple possibilities for expansion, and a system which helps them to make use of 100% of their renewable energy. So the customer wants maximum self-consumption. This can be achieved by introducing energy sector coupling. Using their own energy for their standard domestic loads, but now also using surplus energy through the use of, for example here, an own pilot to heat water. If the customer already has a hot water tank with space for an immersion coil, then this can be a very cost-effective method of storing excess energy. Now, one of the key features of the Gen24 inverter is the easy connection to battery system. The connection to a battery system, such as the BYD battery box, HVS or HVM, is a great method of increasing self-consumption and self-sufficiency. A great feature of the Gen24 inverter is that the battery can be added or increased in capacity at any stage of the life cycle cycle of the inverter to suit the needs of the customer. This makes it an inexpensive and versatile solution. I won't talk any further about the BYD system as Alvaro will be covering this shortly. So one of the features of the new Gen24 inverters is multi-flow technology. So the benefit of multi-flow technology and the Gen24 along with the BYD battery configurations is the ability to incorporate parallel energy flows, meaning that the system can simultaneously charge the battery and provide AC to on-site loads, assuming, of course, we've got excess generation uh, to cover the on-site demands. The battery can be charged via AC. For example, if there's the existing generation on-site, um, maybe an uh, additional PV site system or a wind farm or wind turbine. Um, so this multi food technology ensures optimal utilization of energy as well as a high profitability. All of this is thanks to the versatile nature of the Gen24 inverters. So to dig a little deeper into the multi food technology, here you can see an example of a possible system. The Gen24 inverter can be standalone um, or added to a system with um, solar existing. So we can add for example, if we just had the Gen24, we could have it as a standard system initially with PV on the roof, Gen24 exporting out to the grid. However, if the customer then added a battery, we could do that. And then we would reduce the amount going out to the grid, use more uh, in the household. Or if there is an existing system here, we can add the Gen24 and just a battery. We don't necessarily need extra PV at this point. So you, as you can see, there's many ways which the Gen24 inverter can be utilized to help uh, expand the customer's needs. 
the Gen 24 inverter comes with a feature called PV Point. We feel that this addresses one of the original customer needs of energy security. security. PV Point provides a basic backup power connector in the event of a grid outage with no additional relays or system components. Energy security is now no longer a question of cost thanks to the basic backup power supply of PV Point. PV Point is a set of terminals within the Gen24 inverter which can then be wired into an RCD protected socket. PV Point is an isolated backup supply which is automatically triggered in the event of a grid outage. This RCD protected socket can then be used for anything which might require power during a power cut. For example, charging phones, standalone lighting, making a cup of tea, or perhaps plugging in a fridge or a freezer on a hot summer's day. Here's a quick diagram of how the um, PV Point works. So in the event of a grid failure, the inverter will shut down as usual. It will isolate itself from the grid and then it will start up the PV point and restart the inverter. Uh, if we don't have a battery and we've got sufficient uh, generation on the, on the rooftop here on the PV supply, then we can power whatever needs at the PV point. Obviously, if we've got a battery, then we can draw power from the battery to use the PV point as well. But thanks to multi-flow technology, we can also continue charging the battery for a longer duration if the grid is if it is out for any prolonged period of time. Now, if PV point is not uh, enough for you and you want full backup, then full backup is of course available. Full backup will require, however, additional uh, automatic switchover at the point of supply, as well as an appropriately sized battery. Full single phase backup is available on the Primo inverters and full uh, three phase backup is available on the SIMO inverters. Again, a quick diagram showing what would happen in the event of a drop in the grid. The grid fails, the inverter realizes, opens up the, um, the relay to protect anybody working on the grid. And here you'll see that now, because we've isolated at the uh, point of connection to the building, the domestic loads are still supplied. Again, we've got multi-flow technology, so depending on the generation, the demand within the house, we can still charge and discharge from the battery. Then the Gen24 inverters continue the Fronius design of using uh, active cooling. As you can see, the large central fan is, is a key design feature of the inverter. The large fan allows uh, for quiet operation, a longer lifespan of the inverter by maintaining better temperature control on the system components. Active cooling allows the system to continue working at its peak efficiency. Um, as a result of this, uh, sorry, at its peak efficiency in high ambient temperatures. As a result of this, the inverter has a higher yield and a faster payback. Uh, and even with the fan in the center here, we're still achieving an IP class of 66. So again, this inverter can still be located outside like most of the Frodeus um, inverters up until now. Like all Frodeus inverters, the installation is designed to be uh, fast and easy. We have a few new features. Uh, if, slightly different to the to the old snapping inverters. Uh, we've we've again got the lightweight wall bracket and the snapping concept. We've now got uh, 180 degree locking screws which make opening up the inverter for um, installation very quick and easy. And then within the inverter we've got these no tool no torque spring connections which basically mean all you need to do for your AC and DC cables is just strip off an appropriate amount. Uh, of sheath and then pop them in, and close the cover and you're done. What I'll do is just show you a quick installation video and then I will pass you over to Alvaro who will talk you through the BYD systems.
So hopefully that uh, showed you how quick and easy it should be to install the Gen 24 inverters. Uh, just a couple of quick overview features and then I'll pass you over to Alvaro. Um, obviously we've still got solar web, which hopefully you've all seen in the past for monitoring of the system. We've got multi-flow technology uh, for charging, discharging the battery, uh, AC and DC. We've got PV point for backup and full backup as discussed. Uh, easy, fast installation and service. Um, as you've just seen, installation should be very quick. A service like all uh, Proteus inverters should also be very quick and easy to deal with on site. Active cooling, again, with the front front fan and the um, side exhausts. This means that we can have these inverters closely stacked together, like many of the Frodis designs beforehand. Superflex design, the inverters have a very uh, wide input uh, operating voltage, so we can, uh, on these inverters, go down to, I believe, as low as three panels on a string. So very flexible in terms of their design. Uh, dynamic peak manager for the highest yield without any need for optimizers. Wireless LAN for easy connectivity and open interfaces for integration with third party devices uh, and easy sector coupling. So that was a very whistle stop tour of the Gen 24 inverter. Um, I will pass you over to Alvaro now from BYD who will uh, talk you through the BYD battery box, I believe. Sorry, I think I was uh, unmuting myself at the same time as somebody else was unmuting me. So every time <laughs> I was getting muted myself again. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, th yeah th thank you very much. And th thank you for ha having me today. Uh, I think it's a very exciting launch, especially now that the, the Gen 24 Primo is coming to um, the UK. I think it's going to be a great combination, the battery box together with the, with the Primo. But before I speak about the battery box, I think it's important to speak about the company, the company behind it. Uh, some of you might be familiar already with BYD, as uh, we have been present in the, the UK market for quite a bit, especially the battery box uh, since 2016. But today, I, I, the focus is more on the on the latest generation, the premium generation. So um, BYD is, oh, let's see if I can, yeah, BYD is not only a battery manufacturer, however. Uh, thanks to its history and its uh, technology in battery manufacturing, they have become one of the major players in the renewable energy sector. And as you can see in the in this first slide, uh, thanks to their contribution to the sector and decarbonization of the world, they're considered one of the the top uh, top companies changing the world uh, by fortune over there on the right hand side. And the founder of BYD as one of the top uh, green pioneers, that's one of the top uh, 30 in the world for 2020. Furthermore, uh, from a technology component of view, it's not, not only the business concept and, all, of course, the strength of manufacturing that BYD has and scale, but it, from a technological point of view, the, the BYD Blade, which is the latest battery that was released by BYD last year, uh, is showing that it's also at the forefront of technology. So it's a battery that is considered as changing the paradigm of uh, electrical, electrical vehicle manufacturing. Uh, another area that uh, has highlighted the impact of BYD is the fact that from the very beginning, uh, Wang Chuangfu, the founder of BYD, identified uh, that a small number of vehicles were actually generating a large amount of the carbon emissions in the world. So he focused on becoming a leader in mobility at large scale. So pub, uh, public transport, industrial vehicles, because they, these represent a large amount of the emissions in the world and of course in the, in the vehicle sector. Uh, and also another part of the, the BYD vision for well, this sustainability vision is of course, is, is this creation of the world of zero emissions. So BYD uh, was built with the idea of being able to provide all the necessary components to create a world of zero emissions. This being energy uh, production from with uh, solar panels, especially energy uh, energy storage for a later use, which uh, were the batteries and their, their 20 years of energy storage experience. Uh, uh, can can be capitalized on, and finally, of course, the electric vehicles, which are the the most uh, outward face, the most public side of BYD. Uh, something that it is uh, less 
less in the in everyone's uh, mind these days. We're still like pushing pushing through to try to get, electrify everything. We're trying to get a lot of uh, renewables and energy storage in in the system, but we also need to think about wha- what happens next. So BYD is very committed. It's absolutely committed to uh, creating also zero waste with their their products and that's why 100% of the battery boxes that are that are delivered are taken care of by by our team by the EFT service team in Europe and all of them at the end of their life or when there's a fault or when a customer uh, wants to replace the battery or take it down for any reason they will be sent back where we would do the sorting checking refurbishing and ultimately the recycling because we understand and BYD understood from the very beginning that when the company was set up that raw materials would be uh, more raw materials and that every step of the supply chain would actually be very important to uh, us. This is a sector that is growing exponentially. And that's the reason why it is a fully vertically integrated company from in the very beginning of their raw, raw materials. So if you see the map of manufacturing of BYD, you'll see that there are some, there are some production sites are deeper inside China, in the, uh, in the middle west of, of China, in the Qinghai province. And the reason why it's there is because there's that's the, the, Qing, the Qinghai lithium lake that BYD is actually a part owner of, and it represents about 10% of the lithium reserves in the world. And completely on the other uh, on the other side of the life of the product, uh, recycling and refurbishing. So BYD has been a pioneer on repurposing electric vehicle batteries, electric bus batteries for for a few years for different applications. And every every production line, every cell production line of BYD uh, includes cell uh, cell recycling or more material recycling. And now we can go into the battery, but the, the battery box itself, the product, uh, but when we describe the battery box the first pillar the first thing that is actually inside the essence of the product uh, is uh, the contribution that BYD has to the product so of course these are uh, long life products about uh, will live more than 10 years the warrant or with warranties of 10 years so you want to make sure that the company behind it is uh, strong financially and it will be here for the whole life of the product, uh, but also you are benefiting from the economy of scale and the, the large investment that BYD puts on uh, R&D and manufacturing. Thanks, of course, to the the big scale of their uh, electric vehicle market, but also the large growth of the energy storage uh, market. And thanks to that, uh, in early 2020, they set up a new new production lines for the battery box. So now not only the cell manufacturing is fully automated, but also the battery box itself is fully automated and is in an ISO TS certified production line. So for those of you that are familiar with uh, with that standard, it is the the automotive sector total quality standard so we have the same level of, of quality levels for the automotive products as there are for the battery box second of course is the chemistry and byd is the world largest manufacturer of lithium iron phosphate uh, chemistry so batteries and this is a chemistry that was developed with safety and reliable reliability at heart so first of all from a safety point of view uh, later on when we share this presentation you'll be able to see a, a video that shows the 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 real performance from a safety point of view of the product but essentially it's a battery that cannot light on fire or go into an explosion which is critical uh, is critical from a long-term impact of the product because you want to make sure that your customers have a product in their house so they never have to worry about their safety or or the the security of their of their house and on the other hand it was also created with very commonly available materials, non-toxic materials. So, from a sustainability point of view, it is a it is a quite a champion among um, battery uh, battery chemistries. And the battery box itself, it is one of the big parts of the DNA is its flexibility. And the flexibility gets manifested in many different ways. Uh, the most obvious one at first is the the flexibility and capacity from the smallest uh, unit four kilowatt hours up to uh, a large the largest combination possible of battery box products in a single system is 983 kilowatt hours all of them the same interface the same uh, commissioning process so 
you that way you have a very very large range, wide range of uh, opportunities and thanks to that the batteries can be applied for many many different applications or can be used in many different applications this could be residential could be uh, commercial could be single phase three phase uh, on grid backup uh, off grid anything you can you can think a battery any storage can be useful then uh, the battery box probably has uh, has the a product for you and this flexibility very importantly it's not it's not only uh, the stage of designing the product but also it is a flexibility in time meaning that if you're not so clear at first or your customer is not so clear they can always start with a smaller system and later on add batteries to uh, increase capacity any time in the life of the of the product and this can be purely because they are not aware of fully aware of their loads or they don't really know what they want uh, what the usage of their their renewable energy system will be or it could be that their circumstances change they as we show in the, in this slide the family can grow there could be additional services in the grid that they can get more more savings with a, a large battery or they can have they can add an electric vehicle a heat pump that would have a greater a greater need for electricity and the final piece of the puzzle of the of the battery box is of course the performance uh, <clears throat> as you can see on this slide this is the um, the result of the system performance index uh, testing that the HGW, the university in Berlin, uh, performs every year, and it, it tests all the batteries, batteries and inverter combinations available in the German market, and it tries to develop a, a universal efficiency value. So it is comparing in reality an ideal 100% efficiency system with the real energy you get from a combination of uh, inverter and battery and we are quite proud that we have been uh, number one for the three years that this uh, test has been performed and actually this uh, last year in 2020 uh, we were number one together with Fronius. So summarizing what is the battery box, the battery box uh, main main pillars, main piece of, uh, of the puzzle are uh, B you have BYD behind it, you have inside the lithium iron phosphate uh, chemistry, the, uh, the flexibility, and finally the uh, having the highest performance in the market. And now I'm going to go into the product that is compatible with the Gen24. So this is the high voltage, these are the high, high voltage batteries, the HVS and HVM. These are both are direct high voltage batteries meaning that by adding more batteries in the same tower you are increasing the voltage of the system so they, that's how you achieve the high voltage so in order to have a working system with the with the, the hvs you need two batteries at least each of them is a hundred volt it's a bit over 100 volts so be two, a 200 volt system 300 400 500 system uh, maximum and you can have up to three of them in parallel to, uh, to increase capacity. And same thing for the HVM. These uh, are about 50 volt uh, system uh, module, sorry. So when you add more of them in the same tower, you put in more together in series. So you start with 150 volts with a smaller system with 8.3 kilowatt hours. And then you can have uh, 200 volts, 250, et cetera, up to the largest tower being 22 kilowatt hours. And uh, you can have up to three of them in parallel. And to help you, select and understand the difference between both products and also to to show you the the compatibility well the, the compatible options with the gen, gen 24 uh, i've made a, a, a couple of extra slides first the hvs system is designed hvs battery is designed to to be a, a smaller unit more for re, uh, small residential applications but it, it, this also provides you the option of having fairly high power for a very small a small system. This means that if you have um, uh, the smallest HVS, the 5.1 kilowatt hour uh, unit, in, in combination with the Gen24, the 22 amps of the Gen24, you are actually getting 4.5 kilowatts of power. So you can see very, very small battery, but you're getting quite a lot of power, meaning that if you were to have a power cut, you will have a, a, lot, a lot of power available for you. Uh, on the other hand, the HVM, allows you to go in a much larger system so it's a more of a fu future 
uh, for future proofing uh, your system. I mean, you think that you might in the future need a, a on an electric vehicle or a, a heat pump, so you can start with a small a smaller system. Maybe you start with a 8.3 kilowatt hour system, but then later on you can add a few modules to put 11 or 13 kilowatt hours of capacity. Uh, this one you can have up to 22 kilowatt hours of capacity. However, please uh, take into account that that largest system is only compatible with the, C, uh, the CMO, in the three-phase system. And if you want to put them in parallel, uh, you could have two of them, but if you want three towers in parallel, you can only do that with the 19.3, the one, the one before, the one with se uh, seven modules. And how is this mo I think it is important to speak about how the system is built and what are the, the different components. Very briefly, we'll not. Go, this is not a, an installation training, but I want to show the three steps that you need to follow to uh, to install you know, these batteries to understand how simple it is. So the first step is the is this cableless assembly. So there are no cables in between modules and between the basic the BCU. So you just clip the units together, and then in the next step you have a dedicated installation area meaning that you don't need to be in, uh, installing cables in different areas of the product or, or com complicated connections. Everything that you need is inside that area. And actually, it, it includes also a safety feature, which is if the customer or yourself were to open that, ca that cover uh, at any time, it will switch off the system immediately, meaning you never have live voltage uh, on the battery side available for uh, any accident or any uh, you touch it by by mistake. And the third step is commissioning the battery. This uh, it's very important. You've seen the video of the of the Gen, Gen 24 installation. It is important to slot this a bit before the last step. So uh, one thing that we need to remind everyone is the battery needs to be switched on first and commissioned first before the inverter is switched on. That's the only thing that I would like you to get out of this. And of course, that you need an, an app or a computer program, which is available in our website and also in, in Google Play and in Apple Store to uh, commission the system. And then once the batteries are commissioned and they are uh, OK, they're showing you no alarms uh, in the LEDs or in the app, then you can switch on the inverter. And in just a few minutes, you can have the system working. And just before I finish, uh, because uh, I think it is this is an area that is is of great value for everyone, and I think it's very important to remember. If there's one thing uh, I want to get out of this presentation, is this last section, is the resources that you have available uh, when you buy a, a, a battery box. First of all, the EFT Systems website, the service website, has all the necessary materials from a software point of view and also documentation point of view, some tips, etc. And very importantly, includes the service guidelines. This is a document that is it's a, currently not included in the product, but you can because it's constantly being updated to add more more tips or add more information what we have learned from the field and the common common mistakes or common issues that are uh, that happen in the field. And with that. You can go to site and confirm that your installation has done correctly, check all the, the critical steps. And if you were to have an issue, it tells you first how to diagnose and possibly solve if it's a, a, an installation commission issue. And if it doesn't have a solution, it shows at the end of the document how to get in touch with us, both uh, opening a, a ticket or by a, by a phone. Uh, in the EFT Systems website, you can also find the B-Connect Plus, which is a, a tool for deep diagnosis. So you can use this to check exactly what's happening in the battery, download the history of errors. But very importantly, all this actually can be accessed by us uh, via the internet. So if you want to avoid having to go to site to, if, to diagnose anything in the future, or you want to avoid having to go there to do any updates in the future, make sure that the system is connected to the internet. So just by having a cable going from the unit to an Ethernet cable, CAT5 cable from the unit to the router, then we will be able to access uh, your, uh, your system and diagnose a problem or update the firmware if necessary. Um, I've made a small mention about the ticketing system before. 
So the most efficient way to get a system, uh, an issue solved, especially when you're if you're not on site, is to open a ticket. You will get a response in a few minutes, and from our point of view, you have all the system information there. That way, when we when we uh, give you an answer back, it will be a lot more efficient, and we could probably say, uh, give you, give you an answer in one or two uh, short interactions. And as an added bonus, we have just launched. Well, uh, the B Partner program was launched uh, already a while ago, but now we have just launched the benefits and, and the shop of the B Partner. So for every system you register, even if you don't have problems with it, you can register your systems. You'll be getting points, points that can be used for uh, uh, to get some benefits, to get a uh, use the B Partner shop and get some marketing materials, some spare parts, etc. And that, that's it from, from our side. I'll pass it uh, uh, down to, to David. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Alvaro. So we've uh, already seen uh, that the Gen24 inverter is designed to be very simple to install on site. And we've also seen that the BYD battery has a very neat, tidy solution with very limited uh, cabling and installation requirements. Uh, we've also tried to put a focus on making the commissioning process as simple and straightforward as possible. And as a result, we have a new uh, method for, for commissioning the inverter and integrating the various devices. And this is now done uh, through a smartphone or a laptop uh, using the new web interface. Uh, what you see on your screen now is the, the wizard overview uh, that you'll see at startup of your brand new system. The first thing that we want to do with a, with a new inverter is to connect that to the internet. So we click on the network options, log in, we set a system name, let's call it demo. Make sure you set the right time zone, agree to the terms and conditions, and then you can choose your network option. So as with uh, the, the snap-in inverter range, we can choose either an ethernet or a Wi-Fi connection. Once you've done that, you can simply uh, go on to the next step, which is to configure the product itself. Log in again. The first step is to add components to your system. So uh, first thing we want to add is a PV generator. This is just the panels that you have connected to the system. So maybe uh, you'll have, let's say, uh, a six kilowatt PV system with 3000 watts, three kilowatts on each of the two trackers and we're using a two tracker mode. We've added the PV uh, system to the inverter. We now want to add a power meter. And this is so that we can see whether the, uh, the, the site's uh, importing or exporting energy from the grid. Simply add that to the system. And then finally, add a battery. And again, we see the default option there is the BYD premium uh, HVS M or L options. And we can uh, also say whether we want the system to uh, charge from the grid and from your home. So if you have other generators on site, uh, such as other inverters or uh, maybe a wind turbine, you can charge from those when there's excess energy. Click add, and we can now see the three separate devices, the PV system, the meter, and the battery. next step we can turn on backup power if we want to be using our PV point or a full backup option uh, there's various different options for that and on our uh, product specific trainings we'll go into a lot more detail on, on, on the various options available there and then the final step is to set export limitation for the system oops just reload that page So you can either, as a standard, have the system uh, unlimited, or simply by switching the toggle switch, we can uh, we can enable an export limit. If we have the 6,000 uh, watts of solar up on the roof, we could set maybe zero export limit for your system. And that is all you need to do in order to enable export limitation for your PV system. So really getting the inverter commissioned is a very simple process. Uh, it's just a case of adding the various components into the system and then uh, to, to set your export limitation.
The final step is to get the system onto SolarWeb. So again, you click the final option in the wizard uh, process, start commissioning, and create a new PV system. You just fill in the information for the site of the system, name of the site, and then the system will automatically be incorporated into our uh, SolarWeb monitoring platform. So when you have the system online and generating, uh, the view you'll see on the screen is a typical installation. And this is the site at uh, Fronius in Milton Keynes. We have a 30 kilowatt array uh, with a BYD battery there, and also uh, two inverters. We have one Gen24 and one uh, Snap-in Eco inverter. So the Gen24 is able to charge the battery, both directly from the solar and from the Eco that's on site. We can see the current view of the data. So we can see right now we're producing around about eight, nine kilowatts on site. That's feeding in. And we're using about six kilowatts, six or seven kilowatts on site within our, whoops, within our loads on site. We then also, with the surplus energy, are charging the battery. And we're nearly at full charge now. But the excess energy from the PV is going into that battery, as we can see there, live. And the key aim is to reduce the demand from the grid as much as possible. So getting that down as near to zero as we possibly can. Over the course of the day, you'll also see the energy balance today graph uh, become uh, filled. You'll see probably over the morning, uh, energy being drawn in from the, from the grid. During the daytime, you may see a small amount of feed into the grid, and then back in the evening, you'll see the battery discharging. A perfect system would have pretty much no uh, data here because you're using uh, all your energy yourself on site, and uh, you're, you're not having to draw anything from the grid. You can then also see uh, the archive data for your site. You can see how the system performs over the course of the day, months, week, or even longer periods. And you can get a really good sense of how your system's performing. So we can see the uh, green uh, energy on the graph. That is uh, energy that's going to your battery. You can see the graph line increasing as the battery hits ch full charge. And then if you install other devices, such as our own pilot, you can uh, then start using your excess energy to heat hot water, maybe even charge an uh, electric vehicle. And then during the day, we see the discharge back down to the grid, out to the grid, and uh, the battery go going back into standby mode for the evening. So the web is a completely free uh, tool. So you're able to access your data wherever you are in the world. You're able to see how your system is performing and you can even undertake uh, remote updates using this tool. One of the other nice features of the new Gen 24 inverters is that we can provide remote support. So if you're on site and you're installing a, a new system and you want some extra support in getting the commissioning process undertaken, provided you have an internet connection and you enable the uh, remote support option, we're able to then dial in and look into uh, the commissioning settings that you put in and we can even uh, complete that process for you. So there is the ability that we can give you that extra level of support getting your new Gen24 systems up online. So um, I believe uh, we've now come to the end of the, the presentations and I, I think we'll pass back over to, uh, to our colleagues who will uh, may have some questions for us. Okay, uh, morning guys. Um, so we have had one question come in. Um, so I'll probably pass it over to all of you. Um, can I install the system, so the inverter and the battery as a homeowner myself or are the commissioning apps locked for installer accounts? Um, and if so, can I get an installer account? Uh, so there are uh, there are installer passwords uh, which which can be provided. What we would say is that you need to be a trained qualified electrician in order to uh, install uh, these these components. So that would be a requirement in order to access and to uh, commission the system yourself. And that there is actually another couple of questions coming in. Run from Alan. There it says Alan Griffiths. Can you explain what extra controls are needed for full backup? Can I pass that to you, David? 
Yep, sure. Uh, so uh, in order to uh, enable full backup, you will need to have a, a switchover box and that will be situated uh, next to your utility meter. The key thing is that we should never be uh, feeding energy back to the grid in the event that they've got a power failure in case somebody's going to be working on the uh, the network. You don't want to be electrocuting them while they're, while they're working to get the system back online. So we have uh, a changeover control board, uh, which uh, is an option optional component uh, that you would install at your uh, in incomer. That obviously does add costs to the system, so it's worth work working out whether the, you know, uh, if you have very occasional grid outages, whether it's worth going for a full backup option. But if you do have an unreliable grid, it certainly makes a lot of sense because then you can get the full backup, uh, power your whole site uh, up to the full uh, capacity of, of the inverter. Uh, those devices are, are, are actually not a Fronius uh, product, but we ha will have uh, those provided by a third party uh, if you do need the full uh, backup option. Thanks, David. Uh, we have another question in from Richard Westands. Uh, apologies if I've spell, uh, read that wrong. Uh, hello, excellent presentation. Well, thank you for that. Um, a quick question about DNO approval. Will we need to apply for permission to the DNO in advance of fitting? So uh, it would be the, the standard process that you have at the moment. Uh, if you're under G98, uh, you'll be able to uh, post notify. If you're on G99, you'll need to be uh, applying ahead of uh, your, your installation. Uh, it's also important to note that this is a DC, uh, it's a, effectively a DC coupled uh, solution for the battery, so you, you won't be able to uh, exceed the inverter's uh, uh, nameplate power, so it's it's all considered uh, one system. The, uh, the power of the inverter is the total, uh, the total power for the site. If you have an AC coupled battery, you have to actually add the two uh, devices as potential, uh, potential power systems, so it can mean that you exceed the uh, the DNO limits, uh, but you don't have to worry about that when you have a, a, the, the Gen24. And uh, Richard just asked another uh, quick question on that. I said, what is the pricing, please? Well, um, I'll, CCL can come back to the pricing on, on that. If, you, if you've not already got a login, Richard, as I was mentioned at the beginning, get in touch with whoever your account manager is at CCL or Drop up an email into sales.cclcomponents.com and we can uh, get you set up on the website so you should be able to see all your pricing and uh, trade account um, or, or contact your uh, account manager, whoever normally looks after you in the office. I think that's all for questions at the moment. I don't know if anybody else has got any questions to add uh, or ask. Please um, get them in the questions box and we'll. Try and answer them. Got another five or six minutes to, to go before the, the end of the webinar. If you if you want to, any more questions answered, quick one there, another one. Um, is it possible to really have zero watts from the grid? An example system we say plus minus a hundred watts taken from the grid. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, the, 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 uh, the smart meter will always be looking for some level of import or export. So you're, you're quite right. Normally, we, we would see up to maybe 100 watts either being imported or exported at a time. Uh, but the, the target is to, to achieve zero on zero export limits. Great. And another couple of questions now come in. Uh, is there a limit to the number of Gen 24s that can be connected in parallel? Uh, so if you, yeah, so uh, at, at at start of sales, uh, the the inverter you, you'll have one Gen24 uh, per uh, site. So if you have one smart meter, you can connect one Gen24 to that. But you're able to then parallel up the the battery packs, so you can still get up to uh, the 57 uh, kilowatt hours of batteries through the one inverter. So uh, at starter sales, we would probably suggest you go with uh, the standard snap inverters and a Gen24, and then you can charge off all of those devices through the one Gen24. And another uh, question is, can you charge single batteries from two 
Primo 24 inverters. I think that's yes. probably similar. Yeah, exactly. So, so we 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 enable the charging from uh, from other devices uh, within the building. Uh, so it will charge from uh, the the Gen 24 itself and from other inverters. So yes, that's that's definitely possible. And uh, sorry, David. And just back to the, the question earlier about um, uh, about the hundred plus and minus hundred watts taken to get. Uh, how fast is the reaction on this control? So that the the, the G100 requirements are that uh, it, rea it it identifies and reacts within one second and then completes within five. Uh, so th so uh, the system has been designed and tested to to work to those requirements. Okay, good. And uh, just another comment from Richard. It's brilliant tech and innovation. Thank you. Um, and certainly looking forward to selling the Gen 24. Well, great. We're looking forward for you to buying it. Uh, and another quick question that just came in there: uh, What is the warranty on the Gen 24 and the BYD batteries? So I can leave that to I guess both of you, um, um, uh, both David and Alvaro, can answer the BYD question. The yeah, so I'll, I'll, if I, I'll take the the Gen 24 uh, part. Uh, so the inverter, when it comes fresh out of the box, comes with a two-year warranty, which you can automatically extend free of charge uh, to five years when you register the inverter and get it connected to SolarWeb. Um, you can also have the option to extend it to seven years parts only uh, warranty. Uh, so normally, uh, most people will go for the seven years on on, on the Gen 24 inverters. Alvaro? Yeah, so from from our side, the, uh, the warranty is directly 10 years. So this is both a component and performance warranty in the sense of components would be mostly what's around the battery, so all the electronics related to the, to the battery, and performance would be referring to the degradation of the cells. So you guarantee to have at least 60% after 10 years. Um, in order to define typical use, we provide an energy throughput. That energy throughput is more or less equivalent to a, a full cycle a day. Great. Just to go back to the, the inverter warranties, um, uh, yeah, that is the pretty standard warranty conditions before when it's for older inverters. Uh, with the, can be a standard two years, but you've got that option of uh, making it a full five year or a, or a two plus five uh, with seven years on the, on the parts. Mm -hmm. um, and just another quick question uh, coming in from Andrew Cole. Uh, is there a future plan to allow stacking of more 20, Gen 24s in parallel to increase the maximum output to the loads from batteries? Uh, so there, there is plans for a future firmware update to allow you to have multiple Gen 24s uh, in, in one installation. Uh, I, I don't have a d date for the release of that software uh, update, but it will be uh, enabled uh, at a later date, uh, and then you will be able to have multiple devices in, in one installation. Great. Well, got another minute or two if anybody's got a last question. Uh, otherwise. Um... Say thank you to everybody who have attended today. And uh, if you do have any further questions, um, please just um, on on either BYD or Fronis, and obviously you can get in touch with anybody at CCL Components, your account manager, or you know, drop a um, an email into sales at cclcomponents.com, and hopefully we'll be able to help you. Out. Um, I think the guys are going to be sharing this presentation further, uh, afterwards and uh, I think it's also been recorded so I should be should be able to catch up on, uh, on anything you've missed or need to DC uh, from today. So I think if there's no more questions I would just like to say thank you to David and June for the presentations and obviously Alvaro as well for, for, for his input today on, on the battery side. I um, appreciate everybody coming on board today and uh, I think if, if we're all done, um, I think we'll finish up there. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much. Thanks for hosting, Robert.